If you were born before the year 2000, you may not realize it, but you have lived to see a complete revolution in the way bombers are employed in warfare. One that's sure to be discussed in history books for decades to come. And it's largely because a bomber's really only as good as the ordnance that it carries. And up until, well, my lifetime, bombs just didn't change all that much. The first strategic bombing campaign arguably started back in 1917, when a group of German biplane heavy bombers took off from Belgium intent on striking targets inside London. And despite 17 bombers dropping 72 bombs, flying at speeds of only around 65 miles per hour, only three of those bombs actually found the train station that was their target, with the rest falling within a roughly one-mile radius of their intended target. By 1943, aircraft technology had advanced significantly, and so did bomb sites, but we were still basically just dropping bombs out a door in the airplane. And as a result, the circular error probable of bombs dropped by American bombers at the time was roughly 1,200 feet. Now, what that means is that only 16% of bombs landed within 1,000 feet of their intended targets. By 1944, one U.S. Army Air Corps study determined that it took 108 B-17 bombers, dropping 648 bombs, to achieve a 96% success rate on striking one industrial target. And this is really why carpet bombing was such a common practice throughout so much of the 20th century. It wasn't really that you wanted to lay waste to an entire swath of that adversary nation. It was that you had to to make sure you could hit the targets you actually wanted to hit somewhere in that nation. And by 1972, things still hadn't really changed all that much when Operation Linebacker 2 kicked off in December of that year, which saw some 200 B-52 bombers drop roughly 20,000 tons of ordnance all across North Vietnam over 11 straight days. Now, this campaign saw 15 B-52s shot down, six in a single day. But because it took so many sorties and so many bombs to achieve their objectives, this was actually only a 2% loss rate, and Linebacker 2 was considered a success. But then, in 1991's Desert Storm, things began to shift, largely thanks to the introduction of laser-guided bombs deployed from platforms like the F-117 Nighthawk. But while we often do think of precision-guided ordnance when we think of Desert Storm, those laser-guided bombs actually represented a fairly small percentage of the bombs dropped on Iraq throughout that air campaign. In fact, of the roughly 250,000 bombs dropped in Desert Storm, only 10,000 of them were laser-guided, with the rest being unguided dumb bombs that, again, despite advancements in bombsite technology, still usually only landed within roughly 200 feet of their intended targets. But then, in 1999's Operation Allied Force, the United States brought two new bombing technologies to bear. The first was the B-2 Spirit, which had entered service just two years earlier as the world's first and, to this day, only stealth heavy payload bomber. But the second was the JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munition. Development on the JDAM started right after Desert Storm in 1992, as the U.S. recognized the immense value of these precision-guided bombs, but wanted to overcome the challenges facing laser-guided munitions, as lasers can't shine through clouds or smoke or dust. So they turned to inertial navigation supported by new GPS technologies, all tied in to a tail kit that could be installed on pre-existing unguided bombs, turning dumb bombs into precision-guided smart weapons. And the JDM first saw action from the bomb bays of those B-2 spirits in Operation Allied Force, usually carrying 16 of them at a time. But rather than sending a whole fleet of B-2 bombers, each dropping all 16 of their bombs at the same target in hopes that some of them might hit it, a single B-2 could hit a single target with a single bomb. In fact, of the 652 JDAMs dropped by B-2s throughout Operation Allied Force, 98% of them scored a direct hit. 
And since then, bombers have gone from aircraft we field in huge numbers to drop huge numbers of bombs in hopes of striking a handful of targets to high-end exquisite pieces of technology that can strike individual targets with individual munitions with a supreme degree of accuracy. In a real way, bombers went from being shotguns to being sniper rifles. And as a result, we have completely changed the way we think of these platforms and the way we think of civilian casualties in warfare. These days, if a wayward American bomber missile takes out a dozen civilians, that becomes a huge story all around the world. And we should be happy for that because it really was not long ago, it was in my own father's lifetime, that carpet bombing civilian population centers was not only seen as strategically viable, it was seen as a reasonable option to achieving military ends. And today, that has all changed, thanks in no small part to the invention of the JDAM.